All right, welcome back to another video. Uh, we're out here at Folsom Lake today, Sacramento, uh, trolling for trout. Uh, we're using our downriggers. We're gonna go over some downrigger basics and uh, trout trolling tactics and uh, see how I set out. Uh, hopefully we catch some fish today. Uh, just had a storm, so you never know what that's gonna do. So we're gonna see what we can do, see if we can get some fish in the boat, like for right now. Not good. At least got off of the hook right in the net. That's what we wanted. Nice rainbow trout there. Hey. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what we're after. Nice Folsom Lake rainbow. They're beautiful fish. Real beautiful fish. So when you're trolling for trout, you won't. You almost gotta have downriggers. Um, it's not necessary. The water's cooler. They'll be up in the water column. You can long line, which I'm doing right now with this pole here. It's just out the back, you know, probably 100 feet, 120 feet back. And the lure's just at its own depth, probably running, you know, 10 to 12 feet deep. If your fish are deeper, you gotta get down to them. The only way to get down to the fish is to bring your lure down with a downrigger. You can go with an electric, I prefer, but if you have a smaller boat, you can use a, a manual crank down rigger. You just want to be able to get your lure down to where the fish are at. Sometimes you're marking them on the fish finder, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you want to uh, just kind of play with your depths. You know, I like to stagger, you know, maybe run this one at 30 feet, maybe run this one at 20 and go into increments, you know, five or 10 feet on each one to try to figure out where they're at, what they're hitting on and what depths they're, they're at for, uh, for trolling. When you're using your downrigger, you wanna get a good size weight. So an eight or a 10 pound um, is what I use. Uh, right now I have a I have a eight on this one and a 10 on this. Your weight size and shape are gonna create what's called blowback. Blowback is when the weight, um, depending on your speed that you're trolling, is getting pushed back from straight up and down. So let's say I'm at 33 feet right now on this. You can see the angle of the downrigger cable, if, if you pick that up, it's slightly back. Therefore I got blowback. So I'm probably only running maybe 28 feet deep down at the ball. Uh, and then the lure is on a setback, which is how far you let your lure go back behind the boat before you clip it into the downrigger clip or release. What you wanna do is, uh, troll depends on the lure. Uh, you wanna match whatever trolling speed you're at to the lure you're running. If you're running, like let's say right, right now, I'm running what's called a speedy shiner. Uh, those you control pretty fast. I like to troll those. Uh, you can cover more water, find fish quicker uh, running that. But sometimes you have to slow it down and you'll want to run, uh, you know, just some inline flashers, a dodger. You can uh, run just naked lures, uh, like, a, like say a needlefish, uh, crocodiles. All those things you want to, you know, run just, just the lure itself. Um, if the lure doesn't have any action on its own, then you want to give it some kind of action with a dodger uh, or a spinner. The dodger is going to actually make the lure, you know, go back and forth, back and forth, and you want to get that just to where it's going real as a real nice action back and forth, and not doing a complete spin. If it's doing a complete spin, you're going too fast. Uh, back it down a little bit. Uh, but the speedy shiners, you control those anywhere from two and a half to, uh, you know, three and a half, even up to four miles an hour. Uh, cover more water. You know, the colder the water, the slower you can go. Uh, and, the, and the, you know, higher up, you can run your lure. If it's uh, warm water, you're gonna have to get down into the cooler water or the thermal climb. Uh, so the summertime, 
water's warmer, surface temps are high, a lot of boat traffic, all the fish are gonna get pushed down. So you gotta get your lure down to where they are. And that's where a downrigger comes into play. talk a little bit about types of downriggers uh, well Canon is what I went with um, and I'll tell you a couple reasons why Scotties are great downriggers uh, Scotties have advantages over Canon in that you can run braid and you can set where you want your ball to stop um, with a bead um, but I prefer the uh, the, the Canon it's just the, the switch for it is much more user friendly. Um, it has auto up built into it. Um, there's a small current that goes through the downrigger cable. It's actually called their positive ion control. Um, that stops the ball as soon as it gets to the top of the water. Um, and it keeps it there from swinging back and forth and hitting your boat. Also, it puts out this, what they call an ion field, which is Cannon says is a fish attracting. Creates a uh, electronic field in the water that is supposed to attract more fish. Whether or not that's true or not, I have no idea. That's just what they say. Um, I catch plenty of fish with it, but I know you can catch plenty of fish with Scotties. You just gotta get your lure down to where the fish are. That's what it's all about. With these, you can just hit up, just walk away, you can be fighting your fish. When it comes up, it stops right at the top of the water. As soon as the water breaks that connection uh, with the cable, then the water, then the weight will stop right there. That makes it nice. You can bump them up. You know, if you're coming up real shallow or up on a ridge, you need to bump them up. It's just a quick up and a down. You can stop it. Um, bring them up like this. And what you want to do again is we're talking about setback. Set this back in the water. Beat it out again. A really good line counter I love this Okuma cold water series um, it's a great reel and I love the Lama glass um, kokanee light trout rods here you know I run probably 10 pound mono and then a fluorocarbon leader so I'm gonna run about a hundred foot setback hundred foot's always good especially if you're running a little shallower the deeper you go you don't have to go as far on your setback but get it there engage your clicker grab the tip of your rod pull it down hold this either swivel it in or lean out for it they do have a, a weight puller that I'd like to eventually get but you set that in your uh, release about midway in there and then uh, you just hold down and switch right there, you hold down, you drop it down to where you're fishing. Out well, there, switch is really easy. Then uh, once you get there, then you flip your engage your reel and then reel down to your weight. So you're bringing that, that uh, your line tight to that release. So that way when a fish does hit it, it's gonna pop it out of the release. It's gonna set the hook in the fish's mouth. You wanna get a good bend in the rod like that and you wanna bring the line back closer to your actual downrigger cable. And then you wait for a fish. When it hits, you're gonna see your rod pop up. You're gonna hear the sound of that hum that you're hearing from the downrigger cable and your fishing line. Um, it's going to change pitch and it'll be a good indicator you got a strike or a fish on. And when we're talking about the brands of downriggers, I'm not 
saying that one is particularly better than the other one. I'm just saying the reason why I chose the Canon over the Scotty. Um, it's a Ford Chevy debate, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's that's what it boils down to. You got Scotty guys and you got Canon guys. Um, I just myself, I like the, uh, the Canon. Um, it just works better for me. So uh, I went with that and, uh, you know, pick whatever one you'd like. But getting down to the fish is what's more important. Um, the electrics, of course, are way better for cranking the ball up and down. Um, if you uh, if you only want to, if you don't downrigger fish that often, I would just go with a manual crank downrigger. Scotty or Canon again makes uh, either one. Uh, both have them that you can extend the boom. This one has an extendable boom. Uh, that just means you can loosen these up get the uh get your lure further away from the boat um so any disturbance made by your boat is not as bad if your lure is further away and your lure is down further away from the disturbance of the boat um, right now i'm running fairly deep but if i was shallow like you can run these things you know five feet deep that way if you got a lure on that's you know runs about five to eight feet deep you can get those fish down there with that lure. There's a thing called the shafts, uh, shafts of tackle makes it. It's called the uh, shuttle hawk. If you do run a uh, manual crank type downrigger, I would recommend highly getting you one of those. Uh, let me grab it from my tackle box actually. So you can run these on your uh, downrigger cable and use this as your release. Uh, you say it's a great product. Shuttlehawk by Shasta Tackle. So if you do run a manual crank downrigger, the thing that sucks the most about that is having to crank your ball up, you know, an eight pound, 10 pound ball up from, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet deep. It's really tiring on your shoulder after a whole day of fishing. So with this, you can clip this to your downrigger line like this. I would recommend running a, uh, a uh, rubber band around there so you don't lose it sometimes they come with a rubber band but just rubber band right here what this allows you to do is it takes your lure down to your ball or you can set a bead on your cable to stop it whatever depth you want for stacking stacking is a whole nother thing with downriggers and that allows you to run multiple lures on one downrigger so you can stack you know 10 feet increments and run multiple rods on one downrigger. But uh, they like to say, if you're running a manual crank, I highly recommend running this. Uh, that way, when you've got your lure on, there's a little weight ball in there that slides around. So when you got your lure on it, it's gonna pull down on it, and this is gonna go down your downrigger cable. When your lure gets hit, it pops out of your release. This goes up like that, and it comes back up. So you don't have to crank your ball up and down every single time you catch a fish or you get a strike. So, shots of tackle, shuttle hawk, that's where it's at for a manual crank, downrigger or stacking. All right, when the fishing gets tough, it's time to break out all the stops. The good luck charm will be in a sausage. When the fishing is rough, pop one of these babies open. Oh boy. The fish call their juice in the water like that. Mm. Now just sit here and enjoy and wait for that fish to hit. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Here, fishy, fishy.
Well, it's a wrap for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Didn't have a ton of action, but we got some good quality fish here. Uh, as you can see, there's some nice rainbows here at Folsom Lake. Uh, it's a healthy fishery. Uh, come out, check it out. Uh, stay tuned for more videos like this. I'm planning on doing a, a catch and cook video. And, uh, you know, check out some of the other videos on my channel. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And stay tuned. Thanks for watching. High five. Yeah.